Now we're on to the wonderful covalent bonding. Now we talked about ionic bonding, and in ionic bonding, ionic bonding is a transfer of electrons between two atoms, for it causing a charge to form, which then attracts them together. Covalent bonding is not like that. Covalent bonding is a sharing of electrons between two atoms. Now, think of it more of like, you know, like one electron lasso, I'm sorry, one element lassos onto the electron of the other. But the other electron doesn't really want to give it up. It's sort of like, let me give you a real world example. You're hungry. You decide you want pizza. Two of your friends come along and they decide they want pizza too. And the problem was, problem is, individually, none of you could buy a whole pizza pie. But the three of you get your, gather your money together and the three of you go in and buy a pie, which ends up giving you more than enough food to cover everybody. So individually, there's nothing you could do. But when you get together and you share your money, ah, all of a sudden you all are fed. And that's the way this kind of works. This uh, kind of bonding occurs between nonmetals. Now we know nonmetals are much more stable than metals are. Things like uh, sodium and lithium can't exist by themselves in nature. They must bond to other stuff. Even most of the other metals that, that we think of as metal, like copper and iron, while they can exist by themselves in nature, they very often don't. Most of the time when we look for iron, we don't find pure iron in nature. We find iron ore, which has some sort of oxide or other compound bonded to it. Even aluminum. Aluminum, which we think of as the most pure metal in our world, is actually not pure aluminum. The reason aluminum looks the way it does is because it forms with oxygen to form aluminum oxide. You know, metals are very reactive in that nature, whereas nonmetals are not as much. You know, think about all the noble gases. None of them bond to other things in nature. Uh, things like carbon and oxygen and nitrogen and chlorine all exist by themselves in nature in pure form. They don't have to bond with something else. So covalent bonding, like all of those atoms, get along just fine by themselves. But things always get stronger when you share, right? Isn't that what we learned in kindergarten? First rule of kindergarten, you must share. So we're going to be sharing, and it's going to mostly co form between nonmetals. So here are four great nonmetals to work with, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. And what I'm going to do is, what I recommend you doing is real fast, draw out some Lewis symbols for them. We've, you know, we've been practicing a little bit, but right now practice your Lewis symbols because they're going to become important. Pause it. Okay, good. So you've written out all the Lewis symbols, and now let's move on to some examples. The best way to do it is through actually just getting in there with a pen and pencil and, and doing it. So we're going to draw methane, CH4. So I've got a carbon and four hydrogens. Carbon. And we know that carbon makes four bonds. One, two, three, four, because it's got four S and P electrons and its Lewis symbol looks like this. Now I need four hydrogens to go along with this. And each hydrogen has one dot. Now, in reality, do you have to draw it like this? No. You don't have to follow my methods. You know, I draw out each hydrogen individually so I can see all the electrons that I need. And then once you get used to it, then you can just jump right into drawing the lines and everything. Now, each dot on the carbon is going to get one of those hydrogens. So here we go. Let's move to some electrons. Slide some hydrogens. Bam. Okay, so one hydrogen goes there. The next hydrogen goes on the right. The next hydrogen goes on the bottom. And then the final hydrogen obviously comes up here for the left-hand side. And of course, I could leave it like this if I want to because that pair of electrons still indicates a bond. But instead, I'm going to change it into lines. And that's methane. So I've got my carbon in the center and the four hydrogens that go around it. Now you're looking at this and going, well, why did you do it this way? Why did you do carbon in the center like this? Excellent question. With ionics, there's usually only like one or two bonds going on, so I don't have to worry about rules. But in covalence, now I might be dealing with four, eight. So I mean, I could have a lot of different different bonds happening. So I got to figure out which thing is going to go in the center. So what I want to do is. What I want you to do is, I want you to pause, I want you to practice a little bit. Then I'm going to come back and do some more complicated examples with you. So pause the video, and I'm going to write these out for you. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to pause and write these out, let's do it. So we've got PCL3. So we've got phosphorus 
and phosphorus has one, two, three, four, five electrons. So each of those electrons is going to get a chlorine. And then I have to remember that chlorine also has dots, and chlorine is going to have seven dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one in the bond for seven. And each one of them is going to be exactly the same. Now you don't, again, have to draw the dot in the bond. The line automatically represents it. But when you're counting them up later, you can see them right there in front of you. Okay, H2O. So oxygen has six electrons, forms a bond to hydrogen, which has one electron. Fairly simple, straightforward. Like I said, it doesn't matter how you orient them. You can orient them whoever, however you want. Let's do a couple more. Okay, so SF2. So sulfur is just like oxygen, has two pairs of electrons. and two bonds. Fluorine is just like chlorine and has seven electrons and so it looks like this. AlCl3 okay again Al goes in the middle Al has three dots so it gets three bonds each of those dots gets a chlorine and each of those chlorines have seven I'm sorry have three pairs of electrons just like on their Lewis symbol. Now, I threw AlCl3 in there because, and everyone always yells at me, AlCl3 is actually an ionic compound because Al is a metal, not a nonmetal, and I specifically told you that covalent molecules are between nonmetals. But you can see this one is covalent, this one is ionic, and on paper they look identical. So don't worry about, I'm never going to ask you, is this an ionic or covalent bond uh, molecule? not going to do that. It's not not worth our time. So just keep in mind that on paper they're going to look very similar. So now let's get into stuff that's a little bit more complicated. Straightforward like one central atom is whatever. It's easy. Now what if I, what do I do if I have multiple types of atoms? Like I've got C's, H's, and O's. I've got a lot of things to choose from here. So let's make something CHO2. So what I want you to do again is pause the video and I want you to try to draw CHO2 on your own and see if you run into any problems. So pause now and then come back. Okay, so CH2 actually, CH2O actually has a little twist. So what I want to do is I want to first, when I'm doing this, I'm actually going to give you now rules. So notice we've been just doing trial and error. Now I'm actually going to give you rules. So first thing I want you to do is draw the Lewis symbol for each of your elements. And I'm just going to blow through this real fast because by now you better be good at drawing Lewis symbols. Next, Identify the element with the most possible bonds and place it as the center. And that's going to be called your central atom. So I look at the, each of them and I remember that single dots represent bonds. So carbon has four single dots, so it can make four bonds. Hydrogen has one single dot, so it can make one bond. And oxygen has two single dots, so it can make two bonds, meaning carbon is my central atom. Now, once I've identified my central atom, I'm going to bond to it the thing that makes the second most number of bonds. Oops, sorry. I'm going to bond to the central atom, the atom that makes the second most number of bonds, which in this case is my oxygen. Oxygen makes two, hydrogen only makes one, so bam, oxygen goes next. Now notice I saw I picked my central atom, and then I picked the second, the second place atom, and I bonded it to it. And of course I turned those dots into a line. And now I have to place my atoms. Now what I want to do, my remaining atoms, so what I want to do is I want to start on my central atom. And then this is a little bit trial and error depending on how you do this. So this hydrogen goes there and this hydrogen goes here. And of course they become lines. Now here's the issue. You'll notice I'm not done because there are still single dots on the carbon and the oxygen and rule is no single dots allowed so I have to find a way to get rid of them now I can't just erase them people always love that they're like well I'm using pencil Mr. Siegel I'll just erase them from the existence of the entire you can't do that kind of stuff don't play around with chemistry the chemistry gods will come back and bite you okay so let's actually use those electrons properly so here's what I'm gonna do if I have single dots 
on adjacent atoms. Adjacent means atoms that are already connected to each other. I can form multiple bonds, so double or triple bonds. So let's move those electrons. I'm going to slide that one out of the way, and I'm going to move those so that they now appear in the middle. Okay? And then, of course, those two dots become a line. And this is now what's called a double bond. And a double bond is a sharing of four electrons between the atoms. So a single bond was a sharing of two electrons. A double bond is a sharing of four electrons. Now you'll notice I put double or triple bond. Well, that's a double bond. All my single electrons are taken care of, so I don't have to worry about anything else, and I'm done with this molecule. If I had two sets of single electrons on each atom, then I would make a triple bond. And of course, if a single bond is a sharing of two electrons, and a double bond is a sharing of four electrons, a triple bond would therefore be a sharing of, that's right, six electrons. Good. Okay? So that covers all of our bonding. Now it's just about practice. So hit the review sheet, hit the homework up, and practice, 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 practice. Practice until you're tired of practicing, and then do one more beyond that. And once you're done, then come back and do the molecular geometry stuff.